Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this beautiful bouquet of flowers card, and I'm gonna show you how to do some fake patina on a plant pot and on a um, kind of a tin wall looking element. This video is sponsored by Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find the stamp set that I used as well as a coupon code linked in the video description. The first thing we're gonna do is make our template for our plant pot. And this is a really great tip anytime you need to make a vase or anything like that for a card. So I'm starting off by just sketching on a plant pot on a scrap of paper. Now I'm folding that paper in half because when you're making something symmetrical, it's so much easier to just cut half of it and that way both sides will be the same if you cut it right there on the fold. So now I'm simply cutting out my design and here you can see I have a beautiful little plant pot. Now I'm gonna save this template after I'm done and just keep it right in the little box with my stamp so it'll be handy whenever I need it. We'll use this several times during today's project. Now trace the template on the cardstock you wish to use for your project and then trim it out. You can use any scrap you want because we're going to be inking this up. It doesn't really matter what color cardstock you pick. Then hit it with a couple different colors of ink. I'm using some dark coffee brown and some copper. And then we're going to add some rust and verdigris and gold embossing powder to it. Now that's going to do two things. It's going to give us a really um, kind of pitted texture and it's also going to give us some lovely patina colors. Make sure you let your heat gun warm up and then heat it from underneath so that you don't blow all the powder off of your plant pot. The goal is to have a nice thick textured layer of embossing powder. Quick tip, I decided I wanted my pot to have a little more dimension so I actually embossed a second piece so I could glue it over the first and give that top ridge a little bit of a lift. Now I'm gonna use some acrylic paints to add some of the um, kind of white moldy patina that clay pots get. To do this, simply load a little bit of white paint on the tips of a scruffy hog brush and then just kind of pounce, tap, and dry brush it along the edges and ridges of your pot. Just be here and there, put it on kind of random, and it's going to look really authentic. If you want more patina on your pot, try using a little bit of brown and a little bit of kind of like a seafoam green paint and tap that on too. You can add the brown on like the edges where you want a little more shadow or underneath the lip of the top portion of the pot and just add a little bit of green on top of the white just for that kind of green mold that the plant pots get. Now to make our faux copper paneling. This is such a fun technique and we're going to use some supplies that you probably have in your stash. I started by embossing a piece of plain black cardstock. Now I'm going over it with some gold gelato. It's going to catch the, um, the raised areas, but it's okay if it goes down in the gullies as well. We're going to want to get that gelato everywhere. Now I'm switching over to an orange gelato and I'm adding some kind of coppery tones. It's really going to just help it be a nice colorful metallic. We really want to get that patina look in there. And now we're using some kind of seafoam green color gelato. These are really great. Um, I don't think that people have been using their gelatos very much lately, and I always think it's great to grab the supplies that have been kind of sitting. Now grab a baby wipe and um, simply blend all of these colors together. You'll see that you'll get a nice metallic film over the entire piece of cardstock. I wanted this to have a little more oomph, so I decided to squeeze out some acrylic paint, and I'm gonna use some brown, some copper, and some green, the same green I used on the plant pot. Again, we're only loading up the tips of the brush. I'm using a larger brush this time because I want it to kind of glide over, catch some spots, deposit more paint in other spots. The goal of this is to keep it random. When you think of some copper that's kind of tarnished, you're gonna have some areas that remain bright, some areas that get kind of green and clouded looking, and you need to have all those elements together to make it look realistic. Now you can do this with just the gelatos, but when you start building up a really thick um, coating of that, that, sometimes it makes other things not stick to your card very well. So if you get that first base layer down and it looks great, fine. If you feel like you need a little bit more impact though, switch over to the acrylic paints and that way things won't um, have a problem adhering further on. If you don't have gelatos, you can also use any sort of water-based oil pastels you may have in your stash. Now simply set that aside to dry. I think it looks fantastic and I hope you try it out. My vision for this card was to have a pot of flowers inside on a table looking out on a beautiful, lovely day. So I die cut a little window frame, that's a thin lit's die, and um, then I cut a little piece of white cardstock to fit behind it. Now I use some of that gelato and I use just a light blue to add a sky color in and then I'm just blending it with a little bit of fun foam. I just put some fun foam over a clothespin and use that as a blender. You can also use your finger or a baby wipe, which I'll show you in a minute. 
Now I'm adding some green gelato at the bottom of my little uh, scene here. I just want to have sky and grass basically visible throughout the window. Now I'm using a baby wipe to blend that. And I think the baby wipe is definitely the best way to blend your gelatos on a piece of cardstock if you want a nice smooth blend. The other nice thing about that is it removes some of the oil. So if I wanted to stamp over that and make a more detailed scene out the window, I totally could. Then I just scribbled on a couple of white clouds with a white gelato. Just be real random with it. You want it to be kind of like a fuzzy out of focus scene when you're looking at it on your card. I added a little shading on my windowsill with a brown gelato and then dry brushed on some white paint to add a little distressing to make it look a little more interesting. And then I glued it down in the upper center area of the uh, faux copper panel. I wanted to break up the background and make a little table for my plant pot to sit on. So I took a strip of cardstock and wrapped it with a scrap of gingham fabric. I thought this purple would do really nice to kind of um, be a complementary to that lime green and also bring out some of the pansy colors I'm gonna be stamping in the plant pot. So I simply just wrapped it around and glued it to the back. That way there wouldn't be any glue seeping through the part of the fabric that we could see. Now I need to determine exactly where I want to put the plant pot. It feels a little stark and this whole um, layout seems a little plain. So I thought I needed to make something for it to sit on. So I punched out a scallop circle and then just trimmed off a piece to use as a doily to set my little plant pot on. To give my plant pot a little bit of 3D dimension, I decided to use some 3D foam adhesive. Now notice I'm leaving about a half an inch from the top of the pot with no adhesive. That's because I'm gonna wanna be able to nestle my stamped montage under there. And here's another tip, foam adhesive sometimes dries out, so I'm actually using a little bit of hot glue on top of the foam adhesive to make sure it really bonds well to my card. And by the way, I also glued down that fabric area with hot glue, just so it would stick really well on that textured background surface. Surface. Now you want to get that template you made at the beginning of the video and you want to trace that onto a piece of white cardstock. This is going to be a template or a guide to help us figure out where we want to stamp our foliage. Start with the largest stamp in the set. In this case, it's a large pansy. You want to stamp that an odd number of times. I'm going to do three over the plant pot. Now add some of the smaller pansies in bright pink. Now the ink pads I'm using are called Kaleidacolor. They actually have five colors in each ink pad, making it perfect to use with these small peg stamps. Next, stamp your biggest bit of foliage. In this case, it's the ivy. And if you need to, use your masks to cover up some of the larger flowers so you can get really close to them without overlapping. To make a mask, simply stamp the stamp onto a post-it note on the sticky area, cut it out, and then you can reuse it whenever you want to cover up a stamped area. Now I keep my masks right in the container with that stamp set so I can always use them again and again and I don't have to do the work twice. Now begin filling in with the double leaf clusters there. They're a little more solid, so they're gonna feel a little heavier. So that's why I like to kind of wait to do this after I've got the majority of my other elements in. Now you can use markers or colored pencils to add a little bit of color on the flowers and to fill in on the foliage. Make sure you really fill your design in with color. Since we're gonna be cutting this out, we're not gonna want any white parts poking out through the middle of our foliage. We want it to look nice and full. Then take your fine point scissors and fussy cut around the entire montage of elements. When you're cutting detailed images like this, it's better to hold your scissors still and move the paper as you go. You'll have better control and you'll get a nicer look. Make sure you leave a little bit of a tab at the bottom to give us a place to glue to. I think that looks great, but I'm gonna wanna flesh this out with some more three-dimensional elements. So I went ahead and stamped some of the leaves in clusters onto some cardstock, cut them out really carefully, and then glued them down over the edges of our pot. I chose an ivory card base and then applied a layer of purple and now I'm using hot glue to lay down my faux copper layer with all of our other elements attached. Really use hot glue whenever you're using a really um, thick embossed piece because it will make sure it doesn't come apart. Since I had my stamps and ink still out, I thought I'd decorate the inside of the card. And I'm actually doing this for another reason, because I think this card might be a bit advanced for some of you guys out there if you've never used the peg stamps before. So I just wanted to remind you that you can use these stamps on a plain piece of white or cream cardstock and have beautiful results. Have fun building with them. Have fun playing with them. Don't worry about creating an elaborate card on your first time out. You can see here, it's very simple and fun and a great way to decorate the inside of a card and an envelope as well. I'll put a link in the video description to my beginner video using these peg stamps so that way if you're new you can have a little bit slower step-by-step -step instruction. 
Now at this point, I actually left my card like this overnight and thought about what I wanted to add to it for a sentiment. And then I remembered I had these pretty woven fabric labels from back when I used to scrapbook a lot back in, um, oh, probably 2006 or so, but I saved them because I thought they'd be so pretty on a card. I decided to try all these different labels that I had and then finally settled on one that I thought fit the card perfectly. And since it was self-adhesive, all I had to do was peel and stick. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today and I hope you check out our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them at pegstamps.com. Check the video description for a really great coupon code and links to the products that I used. I hope you give these techniques a try. They can really enhance your card making and scrapbooking projects. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.